All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we are back in Synology's DSM 7.2 beta, and this is one of my favorite features that they've updated, and that is Docker is now Container Manager, and they have done such a better job with it. This is really opening it up to Docker's full potential, and I think it's going to make everybody's lives a lot easier who's often using Docker. Previously on DSM 7 and all the other versions, Docker was, it was there, but it was very kludgy to work with if you're doing this a lot. It wasn't horrible for somebody just spinning up one or two containers, especially somebody who didn't really know how Docker worked. It was good in that sense, but now it is so much better and it's so much more robust. They have very much gone through and really stepped this thing up for somebody who's going to be deploying tons of containers and actually running real applications on Synologies. I have a fair amount of clients who spin up a lot of Docker containers and having the new features that are coming in DSM 7.2 is awesome. They have done a full revamp of the thing and in my opinion, really, really, really improved on it in a huge fashion. So back in DSM 7 and all the other versions, it was always known as Docker. Now they've dropped that and added it as Container Manager. All right, so this right here is the new Container Manager and it still runs Docker containers, but it's now called Container Manager rather than just Docker, which does help serve that there's a lot more going on here than just Docker because it's got a couple of really key features that I think are absolutely phenomenal for people spinning up these things all the time. And the first one I've just got to point out, I'm gonna go over them really quickly here and then go over them in depth in a second here. First off, it just looks a lot better and in my opinion makes it seem a lot easier to understand what's going on here. The other thing they've got, which is probably the most important one, is projects, which are Docker Compose YAML files, which for anybody who's ever deployed Docker seriously, knows that having the ability to just plug in a YAML file is going to be absolutely awesome. So Docker Compose uses YAML files. YAML is a great extension, by the way. YAML ain't markup language. And these YAML files allow you to specify everything about a Docker container, not just one Docker container, but multiple. So say you deploy a service that requires like six different containers. Maybe you've got Elasticsearch, maybe you've got a database, maybe you've got XYZ. Who knows, you've got all these different services all to build one stack. You can create a single YAML file that is a Docker composed YAML file that deploys all of these things. So in one fell swoop, you can deploy the entire app with all these multiple containers rather than having to deploy onesie twosie every single one of them. Also, anytime you look up forms or anything and it talks about how to deploy a Docker container, they always just give you the YAML file to deploy that container or that app or whatever. And so this is going to be so much easier. More on that here. So then within the containers, it's pretty similar to how it was previously, but it is a lot cleaner and you've got your tags there. And I think it's laid out a little bit better, especially because now it's tied to your project so you can easily see that. And then the next thing that's really nice that I wanna show is updates right here. It's got automatic updates for any image that is labeled as latest. So if you tag your image that you're pulling as latest and it detects a new version that is the new latest, it is going to automatically bring up this update available, which makes updating Docker containers so much easier. More on that. Then the registry has pretty much stayed the same. You can always add your custom repositories here. So if you've got your own local one or whatever you've got, you can still use them. And so pretty much the screen right here is identical to how it was in previous versions. So the biggest thing that's really changed here is one, they've got the ability to say, hey, is a container healthy? I'm not even sure how they're pulling that, but right there it does say it's healthy. I do know that is a Docker feature. I've not delved in, into it super deep. Now, another really nice thing I'm gonna talk about here is just the way you lay out, if you're making a container one off, it's a lot easier to do now. So let's go ahead and select WordPress. So say I wanna deploy WordPress. So really quick, I actually don't recommend deploying WordPress on Docker because it is set up with a SQLite database, which is not really something you wanna be using. I would really recommend instead of using that, actually deploy it manually just because anything with a database in it is not really how Docker was originally intended to be built, where Docker was really in originally intended to be stateless. So we're gonna select the latest tag, which will support updates. 
but I would really recommend if you're deploying WordPress specifically or anything else with a database within it, try not to use it in Docker unless that's really the way it's intended to work. It, Docker is great for a lot of things, but databases is not one of them. So it's just gonna go ahead and download that WordPress image. All right, and so right here, we can see that pretty much it's more or less the same as we had with some things moved around and it's organized in a much better way. You don't have to click around to a bunch of different places anymore, which I really like. So I'm just gonna name this container, demo WordPress. And then you've got your normal options here that were there and they've just kind of moved a couple of things around. We go on to the next. This is the screen I actually really, really like now because it's made it a lot easier to go ahead and find out where everything is rather than having to click through a bunch of different sub tabs and everything like that. Instead, it's just on one long menu and you can just scroll through it because a lot of these things you actually have to reference one to the other, like, okay, did I do this, 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 and this? And so it's a lot easier having this all in one place. So we can just set up our ports and it's automatically brought in, hey, this thing wants AD. So we're going to give 80, but I don't think it's going to allow us to have 80, 80, 8, 8, 0, 0. And our normal volume. This has really not changed too much. We'll just say that's root. I've not looked in the proper installation here, but that's totally fine. And then the other thing it's got right here is the environment fit until variables stuck all in one page, which is just eh. For people who have de been deploying these a lot, you know exactly why this is so nice to have everything stuck right here. And then here, once again, we can add our high privileges. You should not be doing this unless you know why you're doing it. And very rarely should you ever be just clicking this right here. Normally what you would do is you would just give it everything specific that it needs and be able to select them only the things the container actually needs. Don't just go in for every single container and say, execute with high privileges because that ruins the entire beauty of Docker, which Docker is pretty close to actually being a virtual machine. It's just a virtual machine running on the actual kernel of the main operating system, but still segmented off. And so with that, you get a lot of protection, not as much as protection from having a virtual machine in and of itself, but like 95% as much. And so by clicking this, you're basically giving it the same access as a program would or even more. So you very rarely ever want to give it high privilege. Almost always you're, if you need a, a privilege, you're going to set it right here and you're going to tell it and you should really think about and understand why you're doing something if you're giving it high privileges. You're normally going to be using a bridge network and you've got your basic settings here. Pretty much they just took the old settings that were scoured all over those different menus and stuck them all right here. And now it's got a nice and pretty clean run and we can just hit done and it's going to deploy that container. I'm pretty sure me putting it in the root level was not what we wanted to do. So I'm just gonna redo that really quick. So yeah, we learned a valuable lesson there. Don't just randomly put your volume at the root level because unless it's set up to work like that, it's not going to work. All right, so right here, we've got it. And you can see that the details are very similar to exactly how they were previously with, I think, a lot cleaner of a way to see it all. They've got a much better statistics here, which I like a lot. And you can see the processes and it just, it was very cramped previously and I think it's a lot better now. And we can just run through everything pretty easily here. Now, that was probably the least interesting of the things. Now let's go into automatic updates, which are huge. So really quickly, I'm running, well, I set up this random unify to do a quick tester to make sure I could run everything well. And so let's go ahead and log into that. So this is my unify container. I'm just gonna log into it really quick. And really quick, we can see right here, we are on 7.3.8.3. Now, if we go into our image, we can see, oh look, there is an update available. So let's go ahead and do it. So all we need to do is select this right here and say update. And container manager is going to do the rest for us, which is absolutely awesome. We're just going to give it a second here to run through everything. So you can see it's a fat container, so it will take a minute. And while this is updating, let's go into our container and we can see that right when it updates, 
it's staying up while it's actually physically updating, but as soon as it's all downloaded and the container is ready, it's going to just refresh the container, take the container down, bring it over to the new version and bring it back up. So that's what just happened there. And let's just see how long it takes to come back up. And that was it. The container was down for maybe five seconds. And then we can just refresh. It's got a reboot still. And that was it. So that is how quickly the container was able to update was it was probably only down for under 30 seconds, which is absolutely huge compared to other versions. So it has pulled the latest version in and it just worked really quickly. That is so much better as it was. Anybody who's tried to update Docker containers in the past using DSM previous versions knows that it was a pain to work with. It was very, very, very slow. And I just love how easy that is now. And it's just it's exactly what you want it to be. And it makes it a lot easier for laymen to just be able to go in here and, oh, hey, there's an update, let's do it, let's knock it out, rather than having to basically take down the entire thing, remap all your volumes, reset up the thing, and then put it back up. It is so much easier now with DSM 7.2 Container Manager. But that was not the best thing. Let's go ahead and actually go into the best thing right here, and that is the YAML files. Docker Compose YAML files are something that were really hard to get working on previous versions of DSM because you had to SSH in, load them in, anybody who's deployed them knows. It was a huge pain to deal with and I hated doing it. Docker Compose YAML files are awesome though. I've got a couple Git repositories that are only Docker Compose YAML files for things that I just need to deploy often on Docker. You just save off that file and you just deploy it and it just works. And that is the beauty of Docker is you can get an app specifically customized to exactly what you need really quickly and easily. So you can put in all of your important things in there and anytime you need to get it up again, you just save off that small config file and it's good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just blow away this unified container really quick. And we're gonna go in and pull up a config file for unify and we're just gonna see how easy it is to run these. So I'm just going, going to go in here and I always go to Linux server IO. They always have the best ones because they always have a beautiful Docker compose file right here. This is the beautifully easy way to work with this. So let's just go ahead and copy these on in and let's just open up a new text document. So now we can go ahead and just edit a couple of these things right here. The one thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete a couple of these settings here and I am going to need to update this guy right here. All right, so weird hard cut there where I was just testing and making sure all this works. I wanna give a quick explanation for how to figure out where your volume is because unfortunately it is an absolute volume which I was hoping it would just be the relative volume based off of the Docker container to make it a little easier for people to understand but it is an absolute path. So for the majority of people, you're going to be putting it in the volume one slash Docker. Now you need to figure out where your Docker is. And so you can just go into control panel, select your Docker container or really any other shared folders, though your permissions get a little wonky there when you try to do that. I'd recommend keeping in Docker if at all possible. Hit edit and NFS permissions, and it's grayed out because we don't have NFS on, but you can still see it's under slash volume one slash Docker. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to set up a new folder for every single one of your projects. And so I'm gonna create a new folder here. I'm gonna call it Unify. Now within this folder, we're gonna have it called configs. And I would recommend just for, for readability and storability and kind of keeping it easy, I would recommend always for every single container and volume that you're mounting, have a different folder within the parent project folder. That's just gonna make your life easier. So now I'm gonna have that in slash volume one slash docker slash unify slash configs. All right, so now this full entire file is done. Let's go ahead and just copy it. And we are going to go back into docker container manager, project, create, and we're going to call it unified demo. And the path, that's going to be docker slash unify. So that's just a way to keep all your stuff in there. 
And now we could either upload it or we can just create one right here and we'll just paste it in right there to create it with all of our lovely configs in there. And just like that, it's pulled all the containers, it's done everything. We've got our full project right here. We can see that it's only a single container in there, but now it's associated with Unified Demo. Click into it really easily now. And you can just see all those configs were built with one file. And so now if we need to redo this effort, we just can. It is so much easier to do now. And so now if we go to DS, And so what it's doing right now is it's just building the app itself. So we'll just see that it's going to take a little while, yada, yada, yada. We'll refresh, can take a couple of minutes depending on the Docker app. But normally once you see the CPU spike back down, that's normally about when the thing's done. Every single app is going to be different. Unify has got to do a lot of things, setting up the database originally, all that good stuff. But see, we, we have a spike down here. So that normally means to me, okay, it's done compiling. And I'm sure there's a log in here somewhere. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, yep. Here's our log right here. Done. The init is done. So now we should be able to refresh. And boom. Now we have set up our Unify application that easily. It is just really easy to do. And it's all based off of this beautiful project YAML file. Docker Compose is absolutely awesome. You definitely should learn it and really get familiar with it because it can make your life so much easier. And so really that's the big stuff that's now in here. It has made it so much more robust. And in my opinion, Docker Compose files are the largest update to this entire container manager compared to Docker. It is a huge deal, especially for people who are often running these things and you're really going to learn to appreciate it. So far, I've not run into nearly as many issues with the permissions with Docker, but that's still to come making sure that all works out. But I would highly recommend learning Docker Compose files because they will make you so much more efficient and so much quicker. The other thing to think about is we can just save this thing off. We can save this really short text file off. We can put it in Git and just constantly be updating it every single time we have a new config on there. You've got version control with Git and it's just a text document. So it's very, very, very easy. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. And we no longer have to do this all through SSH, which is a huge plus. All right, well, that's going to be it for this overview. Go ahead and leave anything else in DSM 7.2 you'd like me to check out in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.